Hello everyone, my name is Debbie. I'm Mum Versitry here on FlossTube and over on Instagram and this is a channel all about cross stitch. Today is episode number 31 and it's all about my September stitching and plans for October and I actually have a lot of show to show you today. I have three fully finished objects, four finishes and 10 more whips on top of that as well as a whole bunch of plans for October. Um, so we're just going to jump in and any details I'll add along the way. Uh, start with my big fully finished object. Um, last month I showed you that I finished a sunset kit called Giants of the Sea um, with the orcas on it and so I dropped it off at the framers at Michael's. They were having one of their 70% sales um, on their nicer Aaron Brother frames. So in 110 degree heat I dragged myself to Michael's to drop it off to make use of those vouchers and one, two, there we go. Um, so yeah, I just picked this up this week and I absolutely love it. Thankfully, it was the lady um, who actually framed the bear up here and she remembered that. So I was confident that she would do a good job with the orcas and I absolutely love it. So I went with a double mat. Um, we messed around with a lot of colours and finally settled on this and the inner navy mat is actually the same that's on the inner mat on the bear. But this frame is actually navy too. It's hard to see on the camera, um, but it gives you lots of contrast in the grain of the wood, but it turned out absolutely beautiful. And like I said, it was a kit, but I swapped out the fabric and used 28 count picture this plus arctic because it's full coverage apart from the sky. So it gives a nice movement in the sky. And yeah, I absolutely love it. You get some glare, but I did go for the museum glass, but the ring light is very bright. So when it's on the wall, you won't see that. So yeah, absolutely love this. They did a fantastic job. And Piot doesn't know it yet, but he's going to be hanging that on the wall tomorrow <laughs> and taking all my mirrors down. I'm starting a animal wall and I have a tiger, a dimensions tiger that can go up beside it. And so I just need some more finishes to fill it up. My second fully finished object is tiny in comparison and it was a start and a finish this month and I fully finished it but it's this tiny little Mill Hill Cardinal Santa. Um, it's one of the Jim Shore collection Mill Hills and I stitched that all up and I finished that by and a little ribbon hanger and just cutting it out and gluing some felt using Aileen's tacky glue on the back. But he will go on our big tree this year. The second one um, I finished last month but just fully finished it while I had all the glue and ribbon and things like that out and it's another little mill hill. It's bear canoe but I did the ribbon and again just glued some felt on the back to hide the stitching. So they are my three FFOs. I feel like I hardly ever fully finish something, but I'm trying to be better. So I have four finishes this month too. Uh, the first one is, it's called Grey Skies and I'll put where I was before. And this is by Emma Congdon Citrovia and you can get this chart on Etsy. And I finished it. I dug this one out from the whip box, like deep down in the whip box and just got it finished. So this one is on 28, 28 count Dove Grey Monaco and it's stitched all in DMC and I love how bright and happy her text patterns are and her use of colour. I love bright things so love this one and glad it was finished and I actually have the other two that are in the series with fabric already picked out for them so they just need started because I would love to have all three hanging up together because my nana used to sing this song a lot so it means a lot so I would like to stitch the other two as well and hang them all up so that's a finish uh, the next one um, is Needles Dance I'll put where I was before and this is by Ink Circles, Hands On Design and Summer House Stitchworks. And I've already stitched this for myself. Um, so this is one I'm stitching for Leslie Under the Sea Fabrics for a model for her new shop. My first model, so hopefully 
it passes the standard because people are such great stitchers so but I finished this one that's that and oh you can see quite a bit through this one um I used all the copper threads that she's in and it is on I think it's blue azure it's 32 count it's either azure blue or blue azure it doesn't have a label on the fabric but I did look it up I just can't remember but I love how the spring colors just pop on this one so this will be packed up and sent off to her now that I've included it in the video there we go And like I said, I've already stitched it. Mine's on the wall, just around the corner there. Another little finish that I had this month, um, it was a start too. And it's from, again, from this one, it is the Little Loch Ness Monster and it's Quirky Quakers by Darling Whimsy Designs. I love, this is my next on my list to do, this little Sasquatch. But I've already stitched one of these before, but I just stitched another one. A Little Loch Ness Monster. And I'm using uh, this thread from Stitchy Stuff called Twilight Forest, and they are also on Etsy. I love their colors. Um, and even when I've bought them uh, like multiple orders apart, the color is very consistent. Um, so they're really good. So this is actually the second little Loch Ness Monster that I've stitched. And I think this is 28 count as you wish from under the sea fabrics it's opal linen so my plan is to stitch one more um and then finish them as little little christmas hoop ornaments and there's one for the big tree and mine and lena get one each for their little trees that are in their bedroom another finish that i had um i'm part of lindy stitchy's bird crush club where we get a a cross stitch bird and the over dyed thread and some stickers and things sent every single month for the year and i think i've stitched this will be my third maybe fourth um i need to catch up but i started and finished the black bellied whistling ducks i did change the color that was supposed to be like i think it's like juicy willow um it was pretty neon on my fabric so i just made it a shade darker but everything else is stitched as called for. Uh, the the thread works that came, the one over dyed, um, was pretty variegated. So I almost did it like if I was colouring in and shading his their bellies, like the way that their feathers would maybe lie on their chest. Because I have seen it and they could, some are come out a bit stripey. Um, so yeah, I tried to like follow the shape of his breast and like over their back. And everything else is solid DMC. So that's that one. And I've kind of decided with all these little birds, um, I might make them little pillow finishes and have like a little bird basket. So that's that one. And this is on a scrap of 40 count something from Under the Sea Fabrics. I remember I cut it off from the bottom of a sampler, the All Souls Veer Landing, but I can't remember what it's called. The label's on the other part of the fabric. But perfect for using up a little scrap. But that's 40 count and it was one over two. Next project that I worked on, um, September is sampler September. You might've heard some people stitching along to. And um, for that, I was gonna have a new start, but I decided I really should work on something I have started already, given I have so many whips. So I actually pulled out a sampler I already had, and it is San Susi by Long Dog Samplers. And I'll put where I was before in two. And here we are. Uh, this month I finished one more page on this. Um, so that's five pages down, four pages to go. And this is stitched in DMC 312, two over two. And the fabric is 32 count Opal Lugana in the color Sea Glass from Be Stitch Me. And I absolutely love this one. I'm looking forward to getting to the next page because it's the elephant's body. So yeah, I look forward to doing that. And then it'll just leave me the bottom three pages, but 
I really enjoy stitching on this one. There's something really relaxing about stitching. It's something monochromatic that you can just pick the thread up and go, that you're not worrying about changing colors or stitching anything in the wrong color, that you can just keep stitching. So I look forward to making, I hopefully by the end of the year, we'll finish the last page in that row. So it'll just leave me three, the bottom three pages for next year and I'll have it finished. But yeah, sounds easy. My next one oh, comes as a little pile. Um, my friend Kenny and I started the kit and caboodle style, where the idea is you stitch on a new kit or a kit from your stash um, every month um, for a year. And we started in July. So what's this month four? Going into month four? I can't count. Um, so my kit and caboodle start for September was this little kit. I won from someone on Instagram, um, but the threads were sorted a little bit weird. So I'll explain that in a minute. So yeah, this was a kit. Um, it doesn't have a name on it, but it seems to be called Garden Dweller Online. It's a Marjolaine Baston Lenart kit. So cute and small. I don't know why I suddenly hit, I'm in my thirties and it's suddenly I love birds. Before I was kind of like, eh, birds. Now it's like I stitch all the birds. And like all the birds are like, what is that bird singing outside? Is that something that happens in your thirties? Um, so yeah, that's Garden Dweller and I'm almost finished this. So I used the kit fabric, um, but the threads I got were already pre-sorted, but I couldn't work out which was which because the bundles had all been separated. So, but it is charted in DMC. So I just used stash DMC that I already have bobbinated. So I was confident I was using the right color. So, cause there's a lot of beiges and browns in that brush. So I might work on this later on today and hopefully get it finished. Cause it's just really the border and adding some legs to the bird and the spider's web up here. Um, this was super cute to work on. It's on an even wee, tiny little scrap. Um, so yeah, that's my kit and caboodle start for this month and it might be finished today. So, Going into October, um, I changed my mind on what I was going to start. I'm trying to keep it all spooky stitching. So I'm going to start these ornaments from Satsuma Street. Um, I bought all four of the new ones that came out this year. Um, I've only ever stitched one before. So I'm going to pick one. So I've got the frog. Uh, he's my favorite. The hearse. the ice cream and fungi. So I'm gonna pick one of these to hopefully start and finish um, because it comes with the perforated paper, uh, the threads, the sequins, the beads, everything you need to stitch them up. So I'm gonna pick one, try and start and finish it and then move to the next one and see how many I can get done in the month of October. So that's Kit and Caboodle. And I have to refer to my notes. Um, and most of the things that I picked to work on this month or when I picked them up was decided by, I joined last year um, the Magazine and Monthly Challenge Facebook group run by Carolyn Zook and her friend Robin. And they, in the month of September, they have a bingo event called AB Single. And every day they draw a letter and you've already pre-assigned a project to each letter and you work on it for an hour or a hundred stitches or however long you want. So I actually got through a lot of projects that way and assigned a bunch of different things. So that's why I think I have so many whips this month. But one of those I worked on um, is, I'm only working on one of them and it's the Teacup Girls and this is by Soda Stitch. And I'm working on this one here, the one reading her book in the cup. Um, and I pulled this back out because because Burn Stitches on Flosstube and Instagram is doing a Soda Stitch Saturday. It's really hard to say. Um, Soda Stitch Saturday. So this is a project I'm pulling out for that. I would love to get it finished because it's been a whip for ages. I think I started it as a mania project forever ago. So I'll put where I was before. That was a tiny little start. And I have worked on this one quite a bit. And there she is now. Um, so I've actually started back stitching a little bit to give her face some details. Uh, this is stitched all in DMC and it's on 32 count Lugana 
um, Mint Splash by Zweigart. I love this color. I love this one. And I like the, um, this, the Mint Splash. There's like a pink version and a, like a charcoal version. Like unlike the Petty Point, Petty Point um, Zweigart stuff, I don't think the dots on the fabric shine through the stitching as much as they do on the Petty Point stuff. So I really like the splash. So that's that one. And I'll be working on that one probably tomorrow. Because I would love to get it finished. But there's actually quite a lot of stitching still in this teacup to get done. Like it's all, it's all going to be filled in white. But I love that one because I already have my next sort of stitch picked out. And that one is going to be, and I'm actually going to use the same fabric too, um, a fat quarter off the mint splash I keep wanting to say aqua because it's more an aqua blue color but it is actually called mint splash but it's very aqua blue so my next sort of stitch once I finish that one is going to be sewing cats and I have the original hard copy which falls out in a huge big chart um, but so does stitch designs on Etsy you can buy the PDF from them now they've actually converted a lot of their charts to PDFs which is way handier so yeah, this is going to be my next sort of stitch that I start. I think Burns doing the cake bears that I've already done, the Tower of Cake Bears. Um, Memphis Sarah E is doing the Christmas bears, so that's why I went for Sewing Cats next. So join that if you'd like to stitch some soda stitch. Uh, this is another stitch along. Um, sorry, was I smart enough to put them all together? Um, Another stitch long that I'm doing this year is the Witchy Stitchers Supernatural Sal. And I can't show a cover photo because it's a mystery and we get a supernatural creature. I think we get one every week. So it might be due one today. Or maybe this is a break week, but um, I'm currently four behind, but I'll put where I was before. And there's where I am now. So this one, I added the zombie and the gin, and I'm making little changes to each, whether it's a little bit different color or adding some crown to give it some sparkle. So I added the zombie and the gin this month. Um, and then this border bit here from the skulls around and down. So I'm trying to do a creature and some border. So not to do all the border at once because it gets boring really fast. So. I'm four creatures behind so far, unless one comes out today and then it'll be five. Because there's a witch, an angel, a gnome, and something else that's already came out. Um, but they do stitch up fast, maybe two evenings and you can get a creature done. Maybe one if it was the only thing that I stitched on. And this is on 32 count Terra Lugana by Under the Sea Fabrics. And this is the fabric of the month which will be available for everyone to purchase in December. Um, all the fabric of the months go up for sale and I think the two most popular um, make it to the main line based on what sells in December. So if you like this kind of brown and blue fabric, you can pick that up in December. But yeah, I made my gin have blue skin and the zombie, I gave him a tie-dye jean makeover. So that's that one. And I will be stitching on this one in October. I don't want to be too far behind, like four creatures is the most I want to be behind. So I need to get working on that one. And when I was on the Witchy Stitchers website downloading the next parts of the Stitch Along, she kind of got me with some of her new designs. Well one of them's new and you can't really see it, it prints out really dark, but it's called Poisonous Plants. Um, it's really cute. It's got the name of the plant underneath and then the plant I thought it'd make a cool little pillow and I'm sure I have some 20 can black Monaco in my stash somewhere. So yeah while I was on there downloading my creatures these fell into my car and with the new Pocus Pocus that just came out ooh, I picked up a book. Sorry about that one. And this one I've wanted for ages, but I saw made by Michelle McGraw. She had finished one for her sister, which was in a, a beautiful cushion. Um, and this is Nosferatu. So 
but why not while I'm getting the charts. So I picked up those three as a PDF from the Witch Stitcher website and I will link all the shops and things that I can down below in the box so if there's something you're interested in you can go take a look and use the links. The next project I worked on, they keep going, uh, the next project I worked on was another sampler. Um, it's Feliz Navidad by Blackbird Designs and this one I'm using my own floss conversion um, just from what I had in stash and just brightening the colours up just a little bit um, and I'll put where I was before and here's where I got to. This is probably, I worked on this the least. But I'm there so I've got maybe maybe a quarter left to do, not that much. Um, I kind of stalled at, I don't know if you can see, these um, specialty stitches that's going to make up a love heart. Uh, this is 40 count and I'm using one thread over two. Uh, but this is the first time I've done these stitches, which does it tell you what they are? It gives you good, it gave you really good instructions. These are eyelets. So yeah, I've never done eyelets before. So I'm doing them with one strand on 40 count. Um, but I got, got the hang of it after the first one, got the hang of it. And this is on four to count boardwalk by Colour and Cotton. And I clearly didn't center this one very well. I think it just went down two and in, in two inches. I'm just like, that'll do. So yeah, this one's gonna go away until about November, December, and then hopefully I can pull it back out and finish it. Cause I don't think it'll take that long to do. But one change that I am planning to make to this one is where it says Felice Navidad down at the bottom. I'm going to change this to Scottish Gaelic, wherever that is, for Merry Christmas and try and fit it in there. So, yeah, hopefully I can finish that as a November, December, when I'm feeling more festive stitching and pull it back out. My next project is one that you see monthly and it is Hippo Reflection by Artisay. I'll put where I was before too. And I managed another page. So yeah, I did that one where his, like where his nostril and his top lip is. Um, yeah, I'm still on track to finish this this year. I'm stitching a page a month. Um, this is all in DMC. It's 25 count, one over one full cross. And I absolutely love him. And yeah, I'm hoping uh, next month for October, I have this page here marked out to start. And I just use highlighter. Um, I do have Marco Parex, which I'll explain in a minute for my next full coverage. Um, but this one, I just use highlighter and pen and paper. But yeah, still on track to finish it this one this year. And I absolutely love him and he will join my animal wall once he's finished. Um, my next one is also a full coverage and I had it on my AB single board too. And cause I was like, I haven't pulled it out for a while and I really do want to finish it for Maya finishes middle school. Um, my plan was to start and finish it while she's in middle school. So she's in sixth grade now, so have two and a half ish years but if I don't get a move on I'm never going to get it finished if I never stitch in it. So this one is mini galaxy girl it's Molly Harrison it's a heaven and earth design chart and I've started page one. Let's see that's where I am. Oh now I'll put where I was before so you can see side by side. So yeah this one put the paper behind this one has a lot of colours in it, especially for being a mini. Um, and I think it uses every single colour in this first page. But you can start to see um, the stars just starting to peek out. So I'm kind of working my way, filling in down this way. Um, this is the only pattern I have in the Markup RX app, the one that's similar to Pattern Keeper for the iPad. Um, but the program just drains my battery on my iPad and yeah, I like the idea of just picking up my projects with the paper and highlighters and just be able to just get stitching. So 
yeah, this is the only one that I have up have in Marco Pirates, and I do like it. I like the searches for the symbols, but I also am old fashioned and like paper and highlighter too. But hope to get moving on this one. Um, I want to be able to finish the rest of this page this month. Uh, I might have been able to do that if I hadn't used the wrong purple. I used it twice and had to rip out the stitches, which are two over one on 28 count. Um, otherwise, I might have finished the page this month, but that's where I am. So progress is progress. Uh, the next one uh, was a new start and is also a full coverage. And I only picked this one up for a tiny bit and realized, no, I want to leave this one for spooky October stitching. And that is the Raven. It's a Thread Geeks chart. It's by Victoria Francis, but I think they've retired this artist now. Because I remember I bought the extra large version just before they retired her from Thread Geeks. Because I have the regular version too. But I only made a tiny start on her. Sorry, the sunlight shining through the window a lot today, straight on my face. Um, so that's where I got to. Just a tiny start. And this is her hair, her hairline. And this is going to be pale colours that you can barely see anything off right now. Um, but yeah, you can see I'm already down to her head. And this pattern is 208 to 8 by 432. And this is 28 count, 2 over 1, 10 stitch. So it fits on an 8 comfortably. And that's good with that one. But I would love to work on that one in October. Maybe finish the first page. Maybe that's being ambitious with all the other things I have planned. But that was my new full coverage start. Okay, where did we get to? Let me see on my notes. Oh, we're all the way over here. The next one is the same thing. Um, it was a new start and I started it and realized, no, I want to save this for October. And I'm part of Teresa Colgate's Patreon. Um, and this is called Mischief Brewing. This is one of the free charts. So I made a, I only made a tiny start on this one. You can barely even see. And this is just in DMC that is charted. And this is 40 count Prosser Pina from Under the Sea Fabrics. And it's one over two. So hopefully I can get a bit more of that done in October. Because it's very cute. And Teresa Colgate's Patreon is well worth the money. There's different tiers. Um, I think I'm tier three, which is $13 a month. And for the content that she gives, as well as you supporting her as a designer, the content that she gives you back in return is well worth it. So I will link that below so you can check that out if it's something you're interested in. Um, because I've been in there two months and two months in a row, there's been multiple charts that she's given for free that I'm like, I need to stitch these. So highly recommend her Patreon and you can jump in and out anytime you want. So I will link that below. So that's also a plan for October. I need October to have twice as many days at this rate. Um, Cause I have more things I want to start and work on. The last whip though that I worked on this month is Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. And I'll put the cover photo in here. And you won't need a before because I just had the outline off the block. But I stitched up this block here. Um, this is 40 count Highland Heather um, by Hand Eye Fabrics by Stephanie. And I'm just using the charted DMC. So this is where I am all together. I love it. The oranges really, really pop off the purple. And again, I hope to work on this one in October. I've pulled the threads oh, for this one at the top, the little headless horseman. So I think I might make this my 30 minute a day project. That's what I did with this block and just chipped away at it. Especially now it feels like, oh, I've done a lot off it, but I'm so far from the end. So I would really love to get the headless horseman block um, stitched in October. And it's quite a chunky block with all that moon filling and all this here is full coverage. So yeah, I might make that my 30 minute a day project and try and bust out that block. Okay. 
Okay, that takes us to plants, as well as the ones that I've already showed you, like the Halloween at Hawkwind Hollow, the block on the page on Hippo, and the Trees Cogat project, and the full coverage. Definitely need more days in October. Um, I also want to start um, this. It's Ink Circles, uh, Thistle, Thistle Crown. Um, Sherry, the Colorado Cross Stitcher, is doing a sampler camp 2022. And it's the same sort of thing as the winter camp or summer camp that she's done. Um, but you have until December to finish a sampler with a modification, like your initials, or you've changed a color, something like that, um, and use the hashtag. So this is one I'm nominated to do. And uh, my change is I'm converting it completely to stash loss. I've looked at the cover and just picked things in my stash to try and use up that are similar. And I can't remember what this is, but I think it's a Lakeside Linen 40 count. And these are the threads that I've picked. So yeah, I just picked things that are similar. So ooh, there we go, you can see. Just pick things that are similar. Use up the stash. So I have Viridian by Colour and Cotton, which is this grey green colour. Uh, Swamp, so Silk by Be Stitch Me. Mm, Grape Fizz by Gentle Art. And Twilight Forest, the same thing that I'm doing the Loch Ness Monster in. Buy stitchy stuff on Etsy. So I need to get that started so that I have any hope of finishing it before December. Uh, the next one, I might cheat and start a day early. Um, the next project I'm using for the 13 stitches of Halloween, I will link Athena Stitching Goddess Designs video below where you can find out all the details. But essentially, you make it what you want. Relate it to number 13, make it Halloween stitching, whether that's 13 new starts, 13 whips, 13 hours on a project. For me personally, I'm going to do 13 not so scary movies um, of stitching worth for Halloween. I don't, I don't do scary. Hocus Pocus is my favourite Halloween movie and that's, yeah, that's probably my genre of Halloween. Um, and I'm excited to watch the new one that just came out today at midnight. It came out last night. Um, so, before I show you, this is what I purchased this. It's um, Something Wicked This Way Comes by Autumn Lane Stitchery. Um, there's a lot of black stitches in this. Luckily, I have a cone of 310. So, this takes up a lot. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to stitch... For my 13 stitches of Halloween, I'm going to watch 13 movies and make progress and start this for 13 movies worth of stitching. And the fabric that I picked out for this is, let me put it up the right way, is Love Who You Love by Mystic Fabrics. And it's a 32 count Lugana. So I thought this was perfect. Like, it's one of those fabrics that I'm like, what am I going to do with that? I absolutely love it. But for something like this from Autumn Lane Stitchery, and they have a lot of designs that are quite chunky, dark stitching that make fabrics like this perfect. It's really hard to hold up all at once, but you get the idea. So yeah, all the black stitching on this. So that's also a new start, but I think I might cheat and start a day early. I um, want to watch Hocus Pocus 1 tonight and then say we'll do Hocus Pocus 2 tomorrow night because Sunday is going to be a write-off because the kids have their first um, karate tournament of the competition season. Um, yeah, and Sunday's going to be a write-off. We have to leave the house at 5.30 in the morning and it's three hours each way to give enough time for them to get changed or to account for any slow driving tractors on the way up there or anything like that. Um, yeah, and it's an all day thing. And Elena's super nervous for it. Um, she's not they're not where they need to be, or I would love them to be, to start the season off. One of the teachers was on holiday or sick all summer. The other one completely tore their ACL. So it's going to be a rough little start, but it's fine. But Elena um, moved up to fourth queue, which is a red belt at their dojo. And it means she has to compete in the next difficulty level of the competition. And she only knows the lowest scoring, like, kata in that division. And we told her just... Go out, 
do your best, you've just learned it. Um, build your confidence standing in front of hundreds of people that you actually move at all is a great thing. Um, yeah, like just do your best, have a good attitude. Medals aren't the be all and end all, just what did you do good? What can you improve at the next tournament? And you'll learn the other things by the end of the season. And by the time nationals come up, you'll learn the more complicated katas. And yeah, and local tournaments, it's kind of like, they're just stepping stones to nationals because there's a lot of, like it's horrible, but there's a lot of bias. The judges are very biased towards their students that are competing. So even if you were the best out there, it doesn't mean that you're going to medal because they favorite their own students a lot of the time so we kind of make sure they know that medals doesn't mean that you didn't do well having a good attitude and trying your best is what's important and you build on that throughout the year so so the last plan start that i have for october is the mystery halloween stitch long by frosty pumpkin i'll put in uh the sneak peek cover photo that they gave us um yeah, this comes in multiple options, whether you get the full kit with all the DMC, whether you just get fabric or you just get the chart. I went with the fabric only option because I have a lot of DMC. And the fabric that they sent is 28 count sterling by Picture This Plus. And it's a nice big square piece that gives a good margin around. You get a nice like chunky border. I think it's about like three inches. They usually give you or four inches. So plenty of space on there um, and since I was getting the fabric anyway I added the little needle minder for the stitch long, the anti-frog potion, super cute, nice wooden needle minder and so that starts on the 3rd of October and I think we get a part every month um, for the year but the Christmas one's cute but wasn't for me but the Halloween one looks really cute so can't wait to start that. Um, as well as all the, all the other things that I have planned to start. I just need, yeah, I just need October to have more days in it. The last thing I have to share is a little bit of stitch, well, a lot of stitchy shopping. It was Needlework Expo this month. Um, but this will be my little announcement. It's like, this will be my last sort of haul hooray. Um, I realized like framing's really expensive and I want more things framed. And this month I started trying to clear out my cross stitch stash cupboard which is now encroaching everywhere and it felt overwhelming after about 10 minutes trying to like organize it I realized this is a lot of stuff there's a lot of patterns in here that I forgot about and it's never going to get any better if I keep adding to the hoard because that's really what it is at this point so I'm going to scale way back on the stash and yeah just cost of living too um California we went through a heat wave our power bills doubled having to use the aircon it was either aircon or survive 110 degree heat um it was just too hot so that power bills have doubled um we're in a massive drought so there's a drought surcharge on water we're about seven dollars a gallon on gas still it's not budging at all some places were nearly eight on the main on the main road um they were creeping up to eight dollar a gallon so just be more conscious of spending and try and save it for things like birthdays and christmas or like Mother's Day, that kind of thing, um, and just stitch the sash that I have. So make a dent in that sash. So saying that, this is my last haul hooray. So let's start with the expo order. I ordered from Abby Top Knot Stitcher Shop and it shipped out perfectly on time. I like the way she set up her website. So if you wanted to add to your order, you could put in a code at checkout and it would all ship at once. Um, I like her layout, no, no emails or invoicing, that kind of thing. I highly recommend her. So the first thing I got seemed to be quite popular at market and it is Trick or Treat Cottage Garden Samplings. Super cute. I got the overdyed threads and the DMC because I wasn't sure if I had that weird apple colour and I put in a the other half of the piece of 40 Count Prosperina by Under the Sea Fabrics that my Teresa Colgate, Colgate sampler was started on. Um, this is the other half of the fat core. I popped in there so that's that one I kind of wanted to start with that one but a lot of people have started it so it's kind of like I might hold off and wait for a bit with that one um I also picked up the little brown bat by cottage garden samplings super cute this is probably my favorite one out of this series is the little bat and again the overdyes 
to go with that one. By the Blue Flower, the Magpie in the Moon. Super pretty. Again, more birds. This next one might actually be my favorite one from Expo. It is Brownfish Owl by Kathy Barrick. That one, that big old owl is a lot of stitching. By again by Carriage House Samplings. This is Garden Sampler. I just liked all the cute little critters on there, especially the little caterpillar here. And the last one from Expo from Kathy Barrick again, Witch Training Academy. Uh, the next couple of things that I dropped my pile, so this has got a little bit out of order. Um, on Etsy, there is a floss dyer called Night Stalker Calling. Um, super cool threads. But the only thing, like I said, with stitchy stuff, the dye lots are super consistent. I've ordered in multiple orders and they're pretty similar. Uh, Night Stalker Calling is one that you'll use as highlights, maybe not an entire sampler, but you know, like use the thread in little bits and pieces because these are all from the same dye lot and you can see the difference in them, but the variegation is really cool. So this is Truffle Shuffle. Uh, this other one, again, all same dye lot, but they look very different uh, scales. That's that one. And this one is not a unicorn. So I can't wait to use those. Um, maybe as little highlights in samplers or even um, like the little inks are called mandalas. It'd be quite cool to use some of these from. And this is one place I have a pre-order for. They have a Hocus Pocus box thread coming out and I think other goodies um but it ships like mid-October so that will be coming in later and I will link their shop below if that's something you're interested in because their threads are beautiful the like I said I was in Lindy, I'm in the Lindy Stitches Bird Crush Club and the one that we got this month is the American Goldfinch and there's the photo on the back and it came with the overdye thread works which this month is 011091. So that's cute. And I just got the shipping notice for the next one. So that will be here in a day or two. The, is this the last thing? Yeah, this is um, my last, very last thing is my one, two, three stitch order. And this was made in direct relation as a stress shop to um, Alina's school went into lockdown uh, the other day. The high school next door uh, got a bomb for it which turned out to be a hoax but they went into like lockdown like full barricading the doors like hiding in their classroom situation until the police cleared the area or said it was safe enough that they could evacuate but it was a nerve-wracking wait I think it was like an hour and a half before we got the second call to say you can come collect them now school's cancelled for the day bring like yeah basically the school's been evacuated but it's the first time we've had that and it was pretty nerve-wracking so I just stress shopped from one to three stitch so that's what that's what this last bit is um this was already in my cart though um Maya I have to stitch her stocking um I finished Elena's last year I just need to turn it into an actual stocking so Maya didn't like the one that I have started for her because I started it years ago and she thinks it's too babyish now so she had to look through all the stockings online and she loved the Stony Creek one and I got 28 count mushroom lugana is stitches on. So this will probably be started in November. It won't be finished for Christmas, but maybe Christmas next year. Uh, I picked up this fish and chips. It's by Heritage Crafts. It has been on my wish list for forever. And I saw Lauren Cross Stitch Bunny finish it. Um, so yeah, I just finally picked it up. But we only, I think only in America you can get, it says chart only. Um, I think in the UK you can get the kits. But I thought this was super cute. And it's not that big, even though it's full coverage. Uh, I picked up two crosswing collections. Again, I don't know what it is with birds right now. But um, these are morning doves. We get quite a lot of these in the front garden at, 
in the evening um, they come for the shade they just sit under all the bushes they look like really fancy pigeons so I got that and the other one is extinct is forever and these ones are so cute I think um fawn from sanctum stitching I think that's where I saw these first the little plovers is it plovers I don't know um but yeah they're super cute so I picked up that one and I picked up this kit that's been on my list for forever it is bear bear and raspberry and I picked this one up with the intention of my last little haul hurrah because I want to stitch this one or make it a start my birthday is the week for Christmas 17th of December so I want to make this like my birthday bear start so made sure I had it now so I could start it then but love that one it's really pretty colors too and I don't know whether I'll use the kit fabric or swap it out for maybe some sort of like pastel over dye situation the last three things are Mill Hill kits because I really like stitching those and finishing those up recently. They're nice little finishes. So I got this one. This is Chippy. And I love his little corn on the cob. He reminds me of Maya just got a hamster. He's called Paimon. I put a picture in here. Ah, he's super cute. So she might be getting this one for her little bedroom tree. So that's Chippy. Uh, little chickadee. It's a cute. And the very last thing is the snow globe gingerbread house. I thought it was super cute. I think I saw this one stitched up on Instagram and it looks way better than even the picture does. So yeah, that's my last thing. So that was a lot. Uh, I hope you have a good month. I hope you come back in October to see all my spooky stitching. Um, and stay safe, stay stitchy, and everybody that's in Florida or in the path of Hurricane Ian, I hope you don't have too much damage and you and your loved ones are all safe. So I will see you at the end of October. Have a good month. Bye.